By now, most of you know, or at least you should know, that exposing a VM to a public internet and opening up the RDP or SSH port is not a wise thing to do. It's not secure and certainly not the modern way of doing things. So that means that in order to provide external access to VMs, we need to think in new, more modern ways. And sure, services like Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop provide ways to enable external access without exposing VMs to the public internet, and then you can jump on from there. But as easy as those services are, you are still left with a bit of management. Q Azure Bastion, the modern way of remoting servers. In short, Azure Bastion provides a way to remote servers, both Windows and Linux, without exposing the server you are remoting into directly to you. Meaning that if you're remoting from across the internet, then the server you are remoting into does not have to be publicly exposed. Kinda like a proxy service, but not quite either. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Let me start by clarifying that Azure Bastion is not a new service. Its preview was launched in June of 2019, with it becoming generally available in November that same year. But it has gotten quite a new cool features since then. We'll cover some of those a bit later on. We will also cover things like pricing, scaling, how to use it, and so on. So stick around till the end. First, let's get down to basics. What is actually this service? If you take Microsoft's word for it, it's a fully managed service that helps secure remote access to your virtual machines. As I teased in the intro, it allows for a way to remote into virtual machines, both Windows and Linux, without having a direct connection, a direct line of sight from your device to that VM. This means that your VMs don't need to be directly exposed. Bastion will sit in front of your VM and then you would be connecting to Bastion and Bastion relays to your VM. All with done without any agents or other changes to your precious VMs. Azure Bastion is by that extent like a gateway, but it's a fully managed one, deployed and scaled by you in your own VNets. Needless to say, this all gives you some security benefits. First of all, the RDP protocol, or ransomware deployment protocol as it's nicknamed, is definitely not something you want open from the internet to your VMs. NSSH should not be open either. Limiting the exposure of your VMs reduces the attack surface, of course, but Bastion being the perimeter and uh, the one being exposed, taking all the hits from the attackers, it protects your virtual machines from any zero day exploits. Except of course any zero day exploits in Azure Bastion, but I could not find any history of that ever happening yet. Another great security benefit with using Azure Bastion is that the login to the service is done over modern authentication. This means that you can enforce things like MFA, for example, or any other thing you want to using conditional access. The logins can then also be protected with things like Azure AD Identity Protection. Neat. You also don't have to worry that much about hardening each of your VMs since they are less exposed, but then again, you might want to harden everything anyway. And while we're on the subject of benefits, I can certainly benefit from you clicking that like button, that subscribe button, your comments down below and so on. So please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Now you might be thinking that, hey, all these things sound great, but how does it actually work? How do I use it? Well, the basic way of using Azure Bastion, you know, like a user wanting to remote into a VM, is to browse to that VM uh, in the Azure portal, then click connect, select Bastion, and then on the Bastion page, you enter in the username and password you want to use to log into the VM. What you then get is a new tab in your browser that contains your remote session, be that a RDP session or an SSH session. As expected, since we are in a browser here, this is all HTML5 based and uses HTTPS. So you do need an HTML5 compatible browser, but most of them are these days. You can also swap out the username and password you use when connecting to your VM to a private key, either supplied by you or one stored in a Azure Key Vault. As for how Azure Bastion works, well, when you deploy Bastion, you assign it a public IP address and you deploy it in a dedicated subnet named Azure Bastion subnet. If you're using the basic SKU of Azure Bastion, then this in essence creates two Azure VMs called instances that are load balanced and those handles the connections. 
But since Azure Bastion is a fully managed service, you never see these VMs, you only see the Azure Bastion service. When a user then tries to connect to a VM through the Azure Bastion service, the user connects via HTTPS to the public IP address of a Bastion, and Bastion will connect from its dedicated subnet to the VM using the port and protocol the user specifies. Because yes, you can use any port you want, you're not limited to the default 3389 or 22. And since Bastion is doing a connection from its own dedicated subnet, you would then need to have your NCGs configured to allow connections from that subnet on the ports you want to use. Bastion needs to have a direct line of sight from its subnet all the way to the VM you want to connect to on the ports that you want to use to connect. Now, I mentioned earlier the basic SKU of Azure Bastion, and currently Azure Bastion comes in two different SKUs. You have the basic one, and you have the standard one. Both of these are priced by the hour, but since you cannot stop or deallocate Bastion at all, the prices are pretty static. Unless, of course, you are using the standard SKU and do a lot of scaling up and down. But let's cover the differences in these SKUs. The basic SKU will do pretty much all you need in a simpler scenario. It gives you two load balanced instances, both of which will support around 25 concurrent RDP sessions or 50 concurrent SSH sessions. With the basic SKU, you can then connect to your VMs from the Azure portal, and that's about it. The standard SKU adds in a few more features at about double the initial cost of the basic SKU. Most noticeably, perhaps, is the ability to scale. With the standard SKU, you can scale from 2 to 50 instances, meaning you can support up to a total of over 1,000 concurrent RTB sessions or well over 2,000 concurrent SSH sessions. Keep in mind, though, that each additional instance comes with an additional cost. Moreover, the standard SKU also gives you access to two pretty cool features, native client support and support for IP-based connections. As those two features are the newest features of Azure Bastion, and since I teased new features early in the video, let's quickly take a look at them. IP-based connection is Azure Bastion's newest feature, becoming GA late in May of 2022. And it's quite cool, actually. Initially, Azure Bastion was tied to Azure VMs for connections. You didn't actually go to the Bastion service in the Azure portal to do any remoting. You would go to the VM and then select connect from there. But with IP-based connection, you have a new option on the Bastion service itself in the Azure portal. Here, you simply input the IP address, protocol, port, specify your authentication details, and then hit connect. And the IP address here could be anything that your Bastion instances has a direct line of sight to, meaning that you can now use Azure Bastion to remote VMs in your on-prem environments or other clouds. As long as you have a connection from your Azure environment, like a site-to-site -site VPN or express route. The second newest feature of Azure Bastion to become GA is the support for native client. And this should, at least in theory, nullify the biggest complaint against Azure Bastion that I have heard, that it is browser only. With the support for native clients, you can uh, have that good old RDP experience directly from your local device to your Azure VMs, complete with things like file transfers. The reason I said, at least in theory, is that it's not as simple as starting up your RDP client and inputting a destination. You have to initiate the connection from Azure CLI, which will probably deter some. But then again, running a couple of lines of code shouldn't scare anyone these days. Okay, so now I've been really enthusiastic and positive about this service, so that means it's perfect in any way, right? Well, it does have a couple of limitations, so let's go over some of them. Like with a lot of other Azure stuff, IPv6 is not supported at the moment, meaning that it can only support a public IPv4 address, and it can only connect to IPv4 addresses. The Bastion subnet has to be named Azure Bastion subnet. Nothing else is allowed, so there goes your naming conventions. You also cannot deploy anything else in this subnet. User-defined routes is also not supported, so you cannot force traffic from your Bastion instances through an Azure Firewall or any other NVA. And lastly, once you go standard, you can't go back, meaning that downgrading from standard to basic is not allowed, you would have to redeploy. Which, honestly, is not a whole lot of work, 
But while we're on the topic of deploying Azure Bastion, make sure you are subscribed because setting up Azure Bastion in all kinds of cool scenarios is the next on my video to-do list. Once it's out there, it will probably be linked up here. In the meantime, I'll place another nifty little video for you there. Thank you for watching.